Charlie Martin Memorial Stadium for the 22nd annual Daily News Eagles City All-Star High School Football Game. My name is Ted Solari from the Daily News. With me tonight, Ralph Recapito, assistant coach at Mass Fontaine, and one of the co-founders of the game way back in 1975. It's been a beautiful night for football, Ralph. We, uh, a few years ago, we made the change to the May starting date in hopes of getting better weather, and can't do much better than this. Well, we're set to kick off here. The non-public will be wearing the white with the green trim, and the public will be wearing the green with the white trim. Omar Green from Martin Luther King will be kicking off for the public. And back deep for non-public in the middle is 33, Vernon Davis, flanked by Steve Userino and Paul Wilson. A lot of speed back there. Green's kick, taken by Davis, Bobble, and he's down on down one knee. knee. And the two linebackers cannot blitz, so that is the main thing. Scott Griffiths, the St. John Newman, is your starting quarterback. He hands inside the number 22, Chris Kennedy, from Ryan. Looks like, looked like Sam Booker from Washington on the tackle linebacker. Eisenhower, the wideouts, Vernon Davis and Brian Brennan, and the tight end, Chris Cade. Again, the inside handoff, that time was number 47, Tom Eisenhower. Jeffrey Mims on the tackle, the outstanding uh, middle guard uh, from Frankfurt High School. He was Crow, Bud Walsh, Robert Anastasia, and Joe Torrenti. Third down, five to go. Non-public, two rather nondescript running plays to start it off. We'll see if they stay conservative. Stay good. Kennedy. Nowhere to go. Call that a loss of one, and it brings up the first punt potentially of the game. Stan Marcinkowitz from North Catholic going to punt. About five or six yards deep into the end zone, so they'll need a good snap. Back off. Ball down by Lou Decree of Ryan. It'll be first and ten. Public lead. Happy nine, public 46. Starting quarterback for the public league is Leonard P.J. McCray from Massbaum. Ralph knows him well. There you see the offensive skill position starters, Leonard McCray, running backs, Marcus Godfrey and Gene Waddy. There's the wideouts, Sean Foxworth and Randolph Sanders. And the pitch to Marcus Godfrey. Picks up a short two. He turned it, 26 total. Inside handball. Hit hard at the line of scrimmage as Gene Waddy bounced off, still could not get anything. And Celine Fields from Southern. I remember a game when PJ was a junior, Ralph, he threw for about three or four touchdowns, long bombs in a pitch Ben Frank. Yeah, up at Lincoln's Field. And nothing doing on that one. Good pressure. Number 49, Sam Bookard, to do the honors. Pretty good foot. And the fair catch called for and made by Steve Lucerino, North Catholic. Yeah, he did, he did kick, though. Yeah, he, he at least kicked during the regular season. Now, a different quarterback in for non-public is Michael DeMarco of West, and he tries to keep the ball to the left side. Just over 10 minutes remaining, first quarter. 
15 minute quarters in the All Star game to try to assure playing time for as many people as possible. That's another one. So now he plays by the Paul Wilson, the quick burst through the line of scrimmage. Robert Williams from University City made the, made the hit. Definitely yards per carry average, yes. I know Godfrey was around nine. Right? Yeah, nine exactly. Third down, the pitch uh -oh. out to Wilson. Picks it up. And snowed under along yeah, the far sideline. Bob will certainly hurt that. I saw 83, Terrence Woodstock, among the tacklers. Terrence is one of the two block players in the game. Called a gain of one, and again, Stan Marcinkowitz. No rush at all that time. They had a return on McCray still at quarterback. The non-public chose to alternate on the first two series. Public league going with P.J. McCray. Godfrey. Hunting and pecking. Picks up about four. Teammate. Stayed away to Godfrey. Kevin Campbell from Ohio on the team. And also. Part of Luke's 22 years. <laughs> Randolph Sanders has been working over in Red Fox for sending plays. Now we have the bootleg. Well covered downfield. And McCray has to run it. And the lead he has first down yardage. It's right in the ballpark anyway. A little bit short. It's going to be fourth and one. Now, do we show early brass or do you punt it away? Well, looks like we're going to go for it. Yeah, Bookard's still over here. Yeah, and Bookard's not on the field, so. They made a lot of changes. Yeah. Let's get a big spot. Yeah, this is the uh, beef line up there. Nice ground level shot. You see McCray bring out the pub. Double tight end. The pitch. Ray through the line of skirmish. Just about unblocked to get through there that quickly. Big play. On public ball on its own 48. The quarterback, we're back to Scott Griffith. Um, St. John Newman. Public looks like they're uh, changing the defense of honor a bit too. The short drop is batted. Good play there by number 89 from Gretz. Right to Henry. Hurry, hurry, yeah, hurry. Yeah. Robert Coleman had a spectacular freshman season with East Carolina. Guy formation. And we have. Yeah, that's the area where they threw it. That's what it is. Tom Eisenhower was on the carry. And it won't count as we'll go from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he had a uh, kind of a spotty season for Newman. He started off pretty well, then suffered an injury and missed the, I forget, four or five weeks probably. And then came back later. Pressure. 
Great promise from and and uh, up. Loss of five. The public uh, league coaches were very impressed with the size and the quickness of the public league defensive line. On the hop. Yes, it is. Gather that up. Gathered up that punt. It only got a couple yards out of it. Called a two-yard return. Cool on first down. Well, they're in a tight formation, though. Double tight end. Second unit running back, Sean Harley from Gratz. And he picks up two to the 39. If you have good linebackers in the 5 2, you can really look good because the five guys take away all the interference, hopefully. Just behind, McCray intending for Lamel Ticket from George Washington, throws a little bit behind him. Third down, eight to go. McCray rolls, tipped, batted, almost intercepted. <laughs> the ball had an interesting flight downfield. Tipped it, and then it was touched by two others, so three defenders got hands on that one. Sam Bookguard back to punt. Condren with a decent rush, not in time. And they're going to let it bounce downfield. Marcus Godfrey, good hustle. Don't expect me to throw some Latin back at you. I wouldn't know what you were saying anyway. But uh, he's on the who's who among American high school students. So. Michael DeMarco from West gives to his high school teammate, Paul Wilson. Second down, seven to go. We have to move it in the center of the line, 62 for the public league. Michael Gales from Bach. Got a little happy in there. Tried to shoot the gap a half count early, and that'll be five. Here is that the public league has 20 schools to choose from in football. And the non-public team here is just dealing with eight schools. There are ten, but two of the private schools do not have participants this year for various reasons. Senior projects or spring sports and charter at Chester Hill not involved. So we just have the eight Catholic League schools that are inside the city limits. Wayne Curran on that tackle. Again. They got the 11 scholarships, $6,000. They were given that tonight to the cheerleaders. Marco, the short drop, the hitch pass. 24, the intended receiver is Brian Brennan. He's covered by Williams from University City. Manning, first quarter. Punt number six. by 23, Paul Gimble at the 33-yard line. James, you saw him trotting on number 44. And the ground level look at the public league offense. James and Harley are your setbacks. They give to Harley a little bit of room. Tries to put a move on Condren, can't do it, but picks up nice yardage. That'll be the end of the first quarter. Second quarter action. McCray pitches the ball to Harley. Not a whole lot of support. One blocker was with him for a while. Town Brown, but snowed under is Sean Hart. Won a loss. Quite a few guys on that tackle. I think it was led by Paul Gimble. Do you see it? 
deep out of the eye. He's shot in the end. Yeah, you mentioned about Wilson, but Harley can really go too. Yeah. Break it and then Chris got to with the bust that line. Yeah, busted play, McCray dropped the snap. They were in a full house backfield there. Yeah. And they were going to give it quickly to Harley, but McCray lost the handle. Sam Bookard. Pops it up. And put that rush on again. 47, Randolph Sanders. Tried to catch his teammate's punt. And that's a penalty. Kimball had a great defensive series there. Also from Father George, Paul Kimball. Another outstanding student from Father George. That's how he got the day, guys. And a famous student off from Charles Kimball. We haven't mentioned the best yet. Why don't you take him, Ralph? That guy, Don Gill, who uh, was our scholar athlete, the uh, first in the public squad, and he said we had a nice story on him on Thursday. Uh, Don Gill from Father Judge, has 1,300 SATs, a 4.0 great point average on the tourist class, and he's going... And Gill is going to Harvard. Get too much better than that. <laughs> Let's see, he's gone out there at the moment. Right, we'll wait for him later. Where's number 84? And Vernon Davis put wide to the top of your screen. Griffith looking for him on the slant. Uh -oh. Intercepted. Bookard. It's going to be a 52 yard touchdown. Maybe. And he plays off on the 47. Sam Bookard. Now, when we get to the replay, we'll try to make sure who it was that batted the ball. That kind of got lost in the shuffle. But it was an easy catch for Bookard. And he had a little bit of an angle. Here we go. Yeah, it might have been 60 something. I think 61. My guess is 61 with the other linebacker, Jackie Colston. And you saw Bookard play off Eisenhower and into the end zone. And that's our first score. 13-10 left, second quarter. 6-0 of the three. That's pretty good offensive back. That's it. Yeah. He's a tough nut, as they say. Not very tall. Let's see what he's listed at. And that's even probably an exaggeration. 5'10", 200. How about 5'8"? Yeah, he's a really solid kid. Illegal substitution penalty on the non-public. Too many players on the field. Illegal participation, probably, that was. Agree with this at all. This kid is not a very good kicker, number one. And if you can't get a yard and a half, oh well. That's why we're announcing. Ground ball to second base. It's not going to get it done. Almost back there to bite them in the butt, Ralph. Defense, because the offense has done just about zilch on both sides. Back in the middle is number 18, Steve Userino. That's a change from last time. Vernon Davis was in the middle. Now we see Userino flanked by Davis and Wilson. I don't think the non public will be too upset if the ball is kicked to either side. Wilson, Davis can fly. Userino, very good speed also, plus a lot of shiftiness. It's going to be Userino at the 13-yard line. 90. Three. 
most productive play so far for the public league offensive has been a six-yard run by Sean Harley. And the non-publics had a 10-yarder by Paul Wilson. And everything else has been uh, literally nickels or less. Time out. What happened there? Why is that? The book guy was ready to run for another one. Just look there each time. Give you the numbers. Scott Griffith again, the quarterback. A little bit of a wide set that time, but they go inside the Eisenhower, and he's lucky if he's back to the line of scrimmage. Shot through the bottom again. Fourth and two. Marcinkowitz getting a lot of work. He's the non-public MVP so far. Good punt. Driving back, number 27, Morel Chappelle from Alamy. Juking. A yellow flag being thrown in. He caught that at his 30-yard line. Yeah, he's in that vicinity, I would think. Yeah, block it. They should be winning the diving. Other officials are Ed Tucker, James Dice, James King, John Lucas, James Downey, and Bobby. 15 yard line. New quarterback from Gratz is Linwood Blunt. And again, inside to Godfrey. Most polished quarterback yet. Six foot five. But he can really wing the ball almost too hard sometimes. When he was playing with Gratz this year, sometimes his teammates would have a lot of trouble trying to catch his hard throws. I believe he's a baseball player. Uh, I don't think so. One of their basketball stars is a baseball pitcher, Ronald Campbell. 43 on that one is Jovan Rogers from King. And give him three. Almost all the best rushers in this game statistically are belong to the public league. Not showing so far. Now Blunt keeps and throws to the second man downfield, number 12. Tim Dumas from Brian on the covers and breaking up the 12. I'm just thinking at some point here, the fact that Bookar was not the regular punter might present a problem for the public league. But he gets it away nicely. Lucerino, nowhere to go. Jackie Colston, first to greet number seven, Michael DeMarco. It's a nine-yard loss. Actually, Mims and Harris are really big guys and have been playing a lot of football for Frankfurt High School. Best friends also. Yes, they are. When you see one, you see the other. Yeah, he's a good player. Chris Kennedy, fullback from Ryan, picks up most of what was lost. Sylvester Bell on the tackle, defensive back from Washington High School. I'm starting to say about Harris and Mims, they're both going to Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and uh, they got themselves two outstanding players in those two guys. The novice might, be, might not be familiar with that, but that's one of the Division II powerhouses in the country. They've done pretty well with some public players. Kennedy tries it again and stopped just enough to draw a whistle, although he did eventually bounce outside and had some room, but he was pulled down in the middle of the pile. And Stan Marcinkowicz, yeah, have we ever had a punter be the MVP? I think we have. <laughs> I think we have. Hopefully they got shut out that game. <laughs> Side saddles that one does Marcinkowitz. 
out of bounds on the far sideline. 6.34 remaining, second quarter. The score remains public league six, non public zero. First down, Ralph, respectable field position. What do you do? I think they got to start opening up a little bit. First down is the time to do it. Two wide receivers. Yeah, and that was the, like a penalty. Whoever carried the ball was out of his stance in a big hurry. That was Jovan Rogers. The running backs, Roland Whiting from Dobbins, number 21, brought that one in. And he lines up in a wide slot. They have double slots wide, I guess you would call it. Blunt looking for room. Yeah. Cut that ball, Linwood. 49, Kevin Campbell. I believe and had to get a whole lot of new possessions. Clothes in particular. Third and five, Blunt. Throws it behind. 81, Ramel Tiggett from Washington was open briefly, but Blunt unable to deliver the ball. Tiggett on the year had 30 catches, five touchdowns, so he's a very competent receiver. Great hands and just enough speed. A little bit of a mean streak, too. He's a tough kid. He's, 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 he's going to pit, I think. Yes, that's a, one of his late signees where they took an interest in him. Bookard does a nice job there to get rid of the ball under pressure. I think going to get the ball. Didn't Ticket have uh, 10 receptions in one game? Yes, he did. 436 until the half. Scott Griffith in at quarterback, non-public. Now the inside reverse to Paul Wilson. Nothing doing. 48. Again, he's an end. We mentioned it earlier. When the public league does well, it's usually because of Strong play at defensive end. Now it's Griffith. Throws underneath to Kennedy. Ooh, good hit. Kennedy, good hit by Bell, but uh, Robert Williams. But guess what? I think Chris Kennedy delivered just as hard a blow, if not harder, to Williams. I believe it is. There it is. We see Kennedy. And he had very little time to notice Williams coming on in there, but he delivered a pretty good shot. Yep. Griffith. Time. Oh, overthrown. To number 21. 61, Jack Wilson. There's that one. Tim Dumas. No first downs yet for the non public. The drought continues. Our man stands. can do is cover it up. Crazy. It's good they have a camera on them. Okay, ball on the 20-yard line. We put scholar athletes for the Trinities as well. And uh, Shana Holloway from Central and Tiki Brown from Bogan are two scholar athletes there. Sean Harley. Latifa well, had an SAT score of 12, something over 12. I remember some kind of magical number being read out for her the other night. Ryan Wood from West Capitol was talking. I was sitting next to Ben Jackson. He wanted to give him a scholarship to the Princeton. <laughs> to the half. Second down. Lapley just entered the game. Tailback. Byron James in front of him. Second and eight. Now it's Blunt, rolling, whipping, and I believe we have interference. That's what you would think on that flag. 81, ticket, the intended receiver. Is that Condren on coverage? Condren is on the coverage, yes. It's Condren in, and uh, Deion Howard is Collins was also honored that night out there as a 
scholar athlete from Washington High School. He was another scholar athlete. What? To unload. Going long for Tiggett. And Tiggett had to circle his pattern a little bit to get around number 17, Deion Harrison from Roman. All right, third down. So a little bit of uh, one slip. Now, we have second down over there on the down marker, but this should be third. What? And the keeper? by the public league, a little disorganized. He had a leg injury as a uh, elementary school student and had a serious operation and really had to rehab. He was very, very heavy at one point. Lost some weight. Fake to Godfrey, blunt, slipped, but I think he was going down anyway. Now the non-pub is gonna spend the time out quickly. Or was he pointing to the public league? I had my I head down. Was public league. Okay, you might be. Well, we'll find out after their first play that doesn't go out of bounds. <laughs> Unless it's an incomplete pass. All right, Sam Bookard on fifth down, believe it or not. And the ball is down by 47. Randolph Sanders. And I have a run. And then the holding penalty, and then three more plays, and then the punt. So, somehow or another. Oh, uh, no, my mistake. I, here's what happened is the defensive hold gave him the first down. There we go. All right. <laughs> All right, my fault. 110 intercept. I said it too quickly and he fought it too quickly. Okay, second down, 103. I believe that might have been Colston in there again. Wilson fumbles and recovers. And the quarterback, so he might get a shot of the quarterback. Quarterback DeMarco is down. Oh, you know, I'm not going to say that you <laughs> Don Vile, 84. There he is, the Harvard bound Don Vile. Trying to be sure where he's going to line up when he goes back into the tight end spot. Big kick, too. Six foot five. Yep. We give to Kennedy, 55 on the tackle. His coach, Jim Kelly, is the head coach of the game. We're in the hurry up mode. Is that a first down? Yes, it is. The first, first down for the non public. Comes with 41 seconds left in the half. for Brian Brennan, the bottom of your screen. And Griffin, Woodstock again, tries to apply pressure. Bookard with the tackle. All down at the 22-yard line. Again, a first down. Public league it is calling time. Scott Griffith. Throws underneath and the comeback for the Davis. He might get to the end zone. No. Briefly changed the pace. That was a nice pattern. I like that one. Davis was on the outside and then just kind of slid to the middle. 
on the angle. Here we see Davis, top of the screen, angling across, right to the middle. Everyone's died. Good play by Murray here, stops him, stops him from getting the touch there. Yeah. So I think there, if you're Davis, you just got to go as hard as you can for the corner, and if they knock you out, tough luck. But you change the pace, and Murray had a chance to size him up. Paul Wilson. 14 seconds, 13, the clock running, down to the two-yard line. And Griffith downs the ball with two seconds left. What are they going to do now? Are they going to go for six or nine? No, I think they're going to go. So the here, it's not going to be just a how he felt about playing in the U.S. Nice. Well, on second inspection out there, we might have to call this the three-yard line. It's a little bit tough to tell from this angle. <laughs> field goals for the prep. This is the city all-star game. All the schools inside the city limits, but Scott Palangi comes a long way. Lives in Medford, New Jersey. Now we have someone else running onto the field late for the nine club. 22 Kennedy is going to be the right side wing man. 21 yard field ball attempt. Blocked by Bookar. Sam Bookar. He could have missed. Blocks the field ball attempt. And that'll end the half. Through the line like a bullet. If he had a pick and end for this one half, then defense has got to be a good player, right? Yeah. See where he comes from. I think he might be at the top of the yeah, screen. Yes, yes, Chris Kennedy unable to put a body on. He blocked it with his thighs. 6-0 public league leads it over the non-publics. The only touchdown, a 52-yard interception return by George Washington. Linebacker Samuel Bookard. And as the half wound down, two seconds left. Bookard blocked a 21-yard field goal attempt by Scott Palangian. So he's done, if not all of it, most of it, Ralph, so well, far. He had the big plays, that's for sure. And it was a great team effort, I think, on both squads, as far as he was concerned. We better hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Bradley played for the San Diego Chargers and also for the Eagles. So we're set to go. Scott Palangian kicks it off for the non-public. Back with the reception on the five-yard line is 81, Ramel Ticket. Straight up the middle. It looked like the ball might have come loose, but not enough excitement from the non-public, so I guess not. Six tackles. The number of, number of people had two apiece. Sonny Nagel from um, Cardinal Doherty had one for a loss. Leonard P.J. McCray, the pitch out. Marcus Godfrey runs authoritatively, fights for extra yardage. Yes, he nine. So the first really productive play for the public league. Inside give. Hankinson Brown from Central. With ten wins apiece, one tie. Over the ball, 66. Leon Mayo, West Philly. I formation. And it's Godfrey. And he's rolled forward by the tackler. Number 43, Dave Cacelli. Not much you can do about that, though. You have to make the tackle whatever way possible. And he actually rolled Marcus forward. And that's a first down. And you're accustomed to averaging 164 yards a game on the team. And look at that outside. Amani Bell runs him down, Ralph. Real nice 
nice block from Ankenton Brown from Central. Led the play out of the fullback hole. Short yardage. It was really important to Bell to try to establish himself as a defensive player. He's, he's big and a lot heavier, and a lot of people figured he would only be able to play offense. But he worked hard and wants to be known as a defensive player, and at Penn State, that's what he wants to try to do. Second and eight. Now they've run into play with the fullback, Byron James, 44. Straight up the middle, gets through, almost all the way through. 21, Tim Dumas. For the public league, that's the first two first downs that did not involve a penalty, only one in the half. Godfrey, nowhere, Amani Bell, along with 43, Dave Cacelli. Coordinator here. Sounds good to me. You got ticket there to tight end. If you catch the ball, you know it's tight end. He just ran on as the uh, see as they broke the huddle at 81 with the yellow helmet, looking for a place to line up, and he's not finding it <laughs> too easily. Uh, this is late, man. Yeah, they're lined up incorrectly. We had two receivers on the one side here. Just a little. Lawson, one for Godfrey. It's second and 11. Now Tiggin and Patterson are lined up at opposite end. McCray. There's the fake. Looking for Tiggin. Downfield. Underthrown. Tim Dumas breaks it up. Yeah. Then Public League. 31 yards away from expanding its lead. Okay, surveys. And turn, I think, the wrong way. So now he's going to scramble. But he's got time right now. And boom. Pacelli can't get him. Finally, number 85, Ed Pazaric. Knocks him down. And we'll wait for the spot. And 58 is the right guard. That's one of your guys, Jim Hughes. Three-year starter, right? Four-year starter, Four actually. He started a lot of three. Godfrey. Looking for see you later time. Can't quite get it. Forty-six yards on this drive for Marcus Godfrey. In seven attempts. And number eight will be productive also. Paul Gimble with the initial rock. Godfrey spins off. Down to the 16 yard line. That's seven more for Godfrey. Godfrey. And that time, Brown could not pull off the lead block. And he's very disappointed in himself. He has that helmet that looks like a Doherty helmet. But that's 89. Okay. Going to throw it. He has 18 wide open. Doesn't hit him. Kevin Campbell steps in. Number 18. Sean Foxworth, his teammate, is wide open, but unable to look to deliver the ball is McCray. And Kevin Campbell, on the interception, continues his fine play. Here we'll see it. Yeah, he was a little bit farther over. So Campbell makes the interception on the six, brings it out to the 32. And a give. Nothing happening. Fifty-one. Omar. 
Second and ten. Griffin to Vernon Davis. Watch out. Watch out. Almost. Down, Curtis Callens. Washington High School. There we go. Vernon Davis, just a little hitch. Some offenses. Yeah. Again, pressure on Griffin. Gets rid of it, though. Nicely. He gets three. Group two guys here. Book guard. And... Up to the 46, a 14-yard pickup for Vernon Davis out of Roman. Kennedy inside. Woodstock from Bach among the tacklers. And also, so what are you calling here? All right, Scott Griffith still in the eye, the non-pub. Kennedy and Eisenhower. The game is inside to Kennedy. And he has enough for the first down. Okay, 42 yard line going in. Another first down. Tom Eisenhower. Jackie Colston grabs on at the bottom. Raymond was also out there on offense. I noticed him for blocking for Marcus. So, yeah, he's doing some double duty here. Vernon Davis, now there would have been a nice play, but it was a little bit underthrown, and Davis had to go down to catch it. Yeah. Gain of four. Third and a long two. Whoa, 67, the center got crunched. Kevin Ayaccio from Ryan. Is that Mims in there, Ralph? Mims. Ooh, he's one guy you want to be crunched by. <laughs> and he's very quick along with it. It's middle guard, Jeff Mims from Frankfurt. Kennedy, first man through. Three first downs on this drive for the non-public. Matches their previous total for the game. Had three on that last scramble drive of the first half. Again, movement up top of the screen. And it was 99. 3.35 left, third quarter. Griffith to Kennedy, sidesteps. Colston near the line of scrimmage. Short gain, enough for the first down. League on the last drive, Chris Kennedy is doing something similar for the non-pubs on this one. Not as many chunks, but at least. Ball on the 18, first and 10, non-public looking to go ahead for at least tie. The inside handoff to the fullback, Kennedy. to about the, let's see, 15 yard lines, 15. Yeah. Second and seven. Equal amount of field on both sides. Griffith, see ya, Jackie Colston. Second sack. Second sack. That's a lot of linebackers here. Oh, almost intercepted again. Take a guess. No. Nope. Not that time. Griffin. Yeah, he's right there. He's going to snap for this uh, field goal attempt. I think. Oh, no, he's, I'm sorry. He's lined up at guard. So it's Scott Palangian on from the 27. So this is a 37 yard field goal attempt for Scott Palangian. It's up. He got it. He hammered it. And it's good. And at least, yeah. 
Scott Palangian from the crowd buries the 37 yard field goal. And 143 remaining, third quarter. Six to three, public league over the non public. Ball at the end of the uh, second quarter. Yes, Phil Brooks is jumping up and down on the other sideline there like a madman. I'm wondering if they have a play on here. Now he's kicking it deep. Going into Sean Harley. Loses. And he has to cover it. And oh my goodness, look at this. Harley covered the ball at about the half a yard line. That's going to spell trouble. The back of it is touching the uh, goal line, I think. Yep. So whatever the football is in length, add an inch, and that's where they're going to take over. Number 77 in the middle there, Devin Harmon from Edison. The center, 50. Michael Bozeman, one of the guards, Ray Harris, in on offense again. Fifty-two, Brian Barnes and seventy-six, Starling Underwood. That's your offensive line. McCray gives to Harley. So after the bad play, at least he maintains the handle and gets the slightest bit of room. Throw out the Eagles. Again with the call. Carlos, welcome to the booth. Thank you. Good to be here once again. Still at the one yard line. And as the teams head up field, we're through three quarters. Public league six, non public three. You're watching Tom K. Fourth quarter, you see the score six to three. Public league, it's third down. Just over 10 yards to go. McCray over the ball. And he's just going to sneak it. And a little bit of a scrum in there. Gets it up to about the four yard line. So the slightest bit of running room, or punting room rather. In the man of the game for the pub. Let's see if he can get off a good punt. Here we go. Gets it off. And with a decent amount of distance. Steve Mussolino fields the ball at the 39 yard line. He gets crunched by Marcus Godfrey. So on punt coverage. Okay, first and ten for the non pub at the 31. And nowhere to go. For Paul Wilson and a little extra curricular. Number nine, Lloyd Allen and Paul Wilson drawing a little bit. Nowhere to go. And 48, Kareem Perrin also on the tackle. Second and 11. So a little bit of a counter delay. Tom Eisenhower, Kareem Perrin again from Bartram on the tackle. Carlos was a linebacker at German to 77 game. 77 game. He said he with uh, James Parker and, and I'm sorry, James Parker, I believe you can call him. With Joe Payton and Mike Fisher and Aiden Martin, some other guys. Well, he also played the pros. Yeah. Defensive back in Barton. Dr. Death. Griffith. Nice touch. Oh, but then not a nice touch. Good evening, Robert Williams. Chris Kennedy, the fullback, slides out. For that catch. So that brings us to fourth down. Carlos, I know you're a defensive guy, but call a play here for us. Come on, quickly. Looks like it's going to be something outside with a quick throw. Whoa, pop up. And reaching back with one hand. I think that was 24. Brian Brennan from Newman. Moving on offense. 
And then we'll bring Ralph back to the fold. Right. Be with you this I think it's going to be a running play outside. Of the That would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would. Ted, once again, it was a pleasure to be with you this year, and uh, we're excited back over the round. Thanks, Thank Carl. You, uh, no gain on that for number 24, Gene Waddy from Frankfurt. Now it's Joe Van Rogers, the pitch out. And just a slight bit of room. Raffle, it'll be interesting to see if Michael DeMarco is able to take the field or Scott Griffith will have to go the rest of the way. Blunt. And goodbye. Linwood Blunt goes down. It's a 10 yard loss. And there you see Pizarro just grabbing onto the back of his jersey and able to fling him down to the turf. Pressure, number 90, Joe DeFelice. Yusserino at his own 39. Hit by 81, ticket and spins for a couple of yards. Forty-five left, first and ten, nine. Probably Chris Kennedy, almost daylight. Saving the day, so to speak, there. Saving the night was Curtis Callens, right? Twenty-five. Second and three. There it is to Wilson. Oh. Little, uh, a little somersault action there for Paul Wilson. Wilson a little Good agility. See Wilson on the inside reverse. Different coaches call it different things. Kennedy out of the fullback hole. And Curran by the ends. All right, Scott Griffith, the eye formation again. Kennedy inside. Briefly had room. Seems a bounty. That was nice. All right, now we have 24. Brian Brennan split low. Again, the running play. 91, the tight end. Who is 91? We don't have him listed here. Or did I read a number incorrectly? Okay. Trying to lead interference. Kennedy takes it down to uh, just inside. We'll call it the 15. Eisenhower, the runner. Kennedy. And Griffith is going to hold it. Keeps. Does he get the first down? I think so. Oh, that's close, yeah. He's got to get to the eight. And... No, it's not a first down. You can see Bill McKeever holding up the fist, which indicates fourth down. Yeah, they have it comfortably. That's at least the length of the ball. So. <laughs> 
Scott Griffith, I believe that's his first carry of the day. Except for uh, Sachs, but first time he actually tried to run with the ball. So the kid from Newman gets it done. First and goal from the eight. Five and a half minutes remaining. Still the eye. Double tight ends. And way up top, Vernon Davis. And movement. You don't want that. We'll wait for the signal. Defensive penalty. So we're going down to the four. Nothing like four free yards close to the goal line. Again a flag. Many flags, many whistles. See it, offensive. These uh, Knights will run a play without a penalty. First and goal, one to nine. Kennedy slicing. Gets it down to about the five or just inside. Kennedy regains the five yards. Lost, look at that nice ground level shot. Line of scrimmage. Kennedy, right side, down to maybe the two. Bookard hanging on from the back that time. The quickness and the speed advantage of the defensive line. Sylvester Bell. So they went with the tailback. There you see, he tried to give it to Eisenhower, and Griffith has to pick it up. And Ray Harris, 72, also in. Bad luck there for the non-public. Back to the 12-yard line. Let's see, let's call this the uh, 21, so it's a 31-yard attempt. Now look at how far back Palangian is, almost five yards. High snap, Dumas. He's going to score! Tim Dumas, the Herber. I don't know if that was planned. I don't think it was. It was just a high snap. Tim Dumas. Look at that. Had to spend fully, and no one is there. He could have run over to the Tony Palmyra boards and no one would have been near him. Tim Dubas from Archbishop Ryan, the holder, gets credit for a 12-yard touchdown run from the original line of scrimmage. And all of a sudden, non-public. It's ahead, nine to six. They a two-point play too. Yeah. So Palangian. Maybe we'll get a chance to add a 10th point. There it is, and it's good. So with 2.35 remaining in the 22nd annual All-Star Game, the score, non-public, 10, public, 6. On the Ramel take it right in the middle. And okay. Now how about this, Ralph? Do you want to kick it deep or do you want to squib it and take the chances? All right. Foxworth. All right, take it, catches it on the box. From the 12. 99, J.R. Gura. Leon Mayo, 66 from West, over the ball. Linwood Blunt, the passer is your quarterback, trips formation to the left. The give to Godfrey, not fooled. Kevin Campbell, correct, 49 and 83. Brian Wood. Yep, 
Let's call it five exactly. And we're at the two minute warning, so the public league will not get to spend a time out here. One is Okay. Protection from Godfrey. Not a lot of time. He gets rid of it nicely though. Was he in bounds? Yes. Number 47 on the catch. Randolph Sanders. So was he out of bounds? Yes. That stopped the clock. Stops the clock. Still makes the tackle. Hazarek applying pressure, and here comes Cacelli at the last second. But to his opposite side, Blunt does a nice job with that pass. Called a gain of six in the first down. Blunt rolling out to his right. Godfrey put a body on Cazarek briefly. Intercepted, no. 52, Joe Sanborn. Newman, I think. The top of your screen. When we go wide will be Sean Foxworth. There he is. Trips formation to the right. Godfrey, the setback. Blunt has time. And now he doesn't have time. And we might have an intentional grounding call. Do we? No, it's an incomplete pass. They're going with the other quarterback. Line up in the eye and McRae motion for Godfrey to move and they split that field. A fake to Godfrey. McRae could run if he chooses. And he does. Gets around Pazarek, still on his feet. Up over the 40 yard line. And it's going to be about fourth and four. Wow, still, still running. 15. Seconds exactly remaining. There you see him, Leonard P.J. McCray from NASCAR. And they can't mess around here. They got to get this play off because they need a lot of yardage. Ryan Mulvey in. Bottom of your screen. McCray. No. 89. John McCool. Five seconds left. If there are no penalties, that's pretty much going to do it. McRae on the gallop, stopped short. We didn't fall on the field. I'm not sure what they're uh, complaining about there. Probably because you hit him in the round of face mask. Yeah, or maybe they thought the linebackers were blitzing, which is one of the rules of the game. 25 seconds. A five yard loss. And non-public, the clock is running. We're going to have the uh, perfunctory kneel down here. Ten seconds. All kinds of people moving there. Griffith, whoa, did he lose that ball? And that'll do it. Scott Griffith wraps it up by kneeling. Final score is the non-public, 10, the public, 6, on the 12-yard touchdown run with 2.35 remaining by the holder from Archbishop Ryan, Tim Dumas. The broken play, we believe, it's tough to tell from up here, we'll have to get that later from the coaching staff, but a very high snap. Dumas reached high, made the snag, ran to his left, and Ralph, we had as good a chance of tackling him. in the first half. Boy, they really picked up in the second half. And there you see the friendship after the game. I'm sure they... Uh, Great job done by both coaches. Not too friendly during the game. But that's all right. They know why they're here. Well, it's always a great rivalry. You know, there's a lot of the tradition in this game going back 22 years. And, uh, it seems like that... Uh, 
the guys have a good time at the banquet when they're together at parents' night and all, and that there's a tremendous competition. Uh, we thought about reorganizing the game a few times, but uh, I don't know if we get this competitiveness. The 37-yard field goal by Scott Palandian. That does it for the non-public. For the public league, the lone score came on defense. 52-yard interception return by Sam Bookard. And again, the final score from Northeast High, Charlie Martin Memorial Stadium on this beautiful evening in May. The non-public wins it 10 to 6. Thank very much, Dave. Thanks, Ralph for Capito. My name is Ted Soleri. We had Kevin Cooney with statistical help and soda retrieval. And we'll wrap it up from Northeast High. Thanks for being with us. The 22nd Annual City All-Star. No, he gets nothing. Brian, if you're around on social media, it's weird like that sometimes. Usually, the place they need to get mugged, they just come and sit down, right? So, do they, do they? Uh, when do they get their mugged? Do we should do that. It's the different kinds of meetings we've had with players and parents. My name is Clifton Hubbard. I'm the president of the executive committee of the All-Star Game. I'd like to take this opportunity on behalf of the executive committee to welcome you to our 22nd annual banquet, which precedes our 22nd annual All-Star Game. There's a little short history or explanation of the game on the inside cover of your program. There are a few things there that I might highlight, but I'll ask you at your own leisure to read the entire thing. As you know, the involvement in this, in this game, we involve 100 of the best players in the city of Philadelphia. And this time, introduce to you our master of ceremonies, Bob Caesar. Thank you very much. Uh, what a thrill it is to be back here again. Uh, it seems like 22 years went by in a minute. And here we are with uh, our 22nd All-Star Banquet before the game. And it's uh, to have a great bunch of kids get together to put on a spectacular event is just something beyond all imagination. At this time, I would like to introduce the coaches of both teams. But first, I'll introduce the coach of the non-public league, uh, I'm sorry, of the public league, and that's Gene Kelly from West Philadelphia High School. Good evening. I'd like to introduce my coaching staff for this year. Mr. Dave Sanderson from Martin Luther King High School. Mr. Ron Matthews from Overbrook High School. Mr. Tony Plummer from University City High School. Mr. Dennis Gittenthal from Northeast High School. And not present tonight, Mr. Lou D'Alonzo from South Philly. Now I'd like to introduce the pride of the public league. Number 18, Sean Foxworth, Mass Bomb High School. Number 19, Omar Mitchell, Lincoln High School. Number 24, Gene Waddy. Number 31, Jeff Riley, Central High School. Number 35, Jamal Clayton, Germantown High School. Number 56, Earl Morant, West Philadelphia High School. Number 58, Jim Hughes, Mass Bomb High School. Number 62, Michael Gales, Bach Tech. Number 63, Jeff Mims, Frankfurt High School. Thank <laughs> you.
Number six in high school. Number 77, Devin Harmon, Edison High School. Martin Luther King High School. Number 90, Floyd Allen, Northwest Philadelphia High School. Give him a hand. Gil Brooks from St. Joe Prep. Thank you, Bob. I'd like to introduce our coaching staff this year for the non-public squad from Father Judge High School, Bill Cook. From Father Judge High School, Jim Kuderman. From West Catholic High School, Brian Fluck. And from St. Joe's Prep, Chris Lomax. I'd like to introduce the non public squad for the 1996 All Star Game. John Newman, Brian Brennan. Number 27 from Archbishop Ryan, Lou Decree. Number 65 from Father Judge, Bud Walsh. One from Father Judge, Kevin Cox. Number 89 from North Catholic, Father Judge, J.R. Gura. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 1996 non-public league all-star team. All right, fellas, if you would please take your seats. Good morning show, good day Philadelphia, and pay tribute to the youngsters, the coaches, and the families who make it possible for youngsters of all races, creeds, and colors in public and non-public schools to demonstrate the best in scholastics and the best in athletics. So I congratulate you, I wish you the best, I gotta get back on down to uh, Fox to do some things for tonight's 10 o'clock, but check us out in the morning between 7 and 9, we're gonna be talking about this game, encouraging more people to go out and support high school sports by buying tickets for the game Saturday night and then we'll have more highlights than anybody else. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Stand up here. How y'all doing? Um, I don't know what to say, but on behalf of the public league, we'd like to get this ball to the coach. On behalf of the Public League All-Star Team, we like to present you with this game ball. Thank you, team. It's been a pleasure working with you. I know the other coaches share my feelings. Thank you. Um, I want to say um, congratulations to all the Public League All-Stars, as well as congratulations to all the non-Public All-Stars. We friends before the game, during the game, after the game. Saturday night, let's get it on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to bring up the non-public league uh, captains and uh, Paul Gamble. I'm sorry, Gimble from Judge, Father Judge, um, Imani Bell from Doherty, Scott Griffin from Newman, and Chris Kennedy from Ryan.
1996 non-public all-star team, I'd like to present this game ball to Coach Gil Brooks for all his hard work and dedication. Good luck to the Catholic League as well as the non-Catholic leaguers, and just say, <laughs> have a nice game. <laughs> that word, we use non-public, but we'll accept it tonight. <laughs> Go into the National Football League. Not only that, but if we count all the players that was on some kind of squad and didn't make the team a National Football team, then we're talking about Three players every year have gone up to the pros to try out. And out of the three, one has made it. So therefore, we're very proud of that. For instance, we have right now playing Rich Gannon, who was from St. Joe Prep, who's with the Kansas City Chiefs. We have Charles Way from, with the New York Giants and from Northeast High School. And he, uh, he played a great deal last year. Of course, we should all know we have Eric Williams from Bartram with the Dallas Cowboys, who's probably the best tackle in the National Football League. We had a player, Mike McCluskey, who played for Houston, who was one of the best tight ends in football, and eventually played with the Philadelphia Eagles. Right now, Harry Swain, is from Cardinal Doherty playing with the San Diego Chargers. Blair Thomas from Frankfurt High School is now with the Carolina Panthers. We have Frank Wycheck, who's from Ryan, who's now with the Houston Oilers. We had a player who was at Syracuse, played for Washington High School, David Jacobs, who was a kicker for uh, the Cleveland Browns. Dave Martin from Bartram, he played with the Denver Broncos. Bob Bell, who was in this room today, played for the St. Louis Cardinals, and he's from West Philadelphia High School. His son is now in the game. We have probably one of the best players that ever played here in Philadelphia, and he went to my alma mater, Wake Forest, and who played with the San Diego Chargers, and that's Carlos Bradley right here. Carlos will be up in a little while to say a few words. Then we had the first scholarship from the game was to a fellow by the name of James Parker, who's somebody from Wake Forest, the coach of Wake Forest saw him, and they took him just on a win. They said, okay, we'll give him a scholarship. He ended up being the most valuable player in the Atlanta Coast Conference. Then he went up to Canada, and he was three times the defensive player of the year in Canada, and he went to Ben Franklin High School. Now, we have three people that were drafted this year. One was Dwayne White, who's with the Jets, and he's from South Philadelphia High School. And Victor Bellamy was with the Jets from Central High School, who, um, who is, and then we have, um, no, they're the old players, I'm sorry. Lance Johnson is now drafted by the Raiders, and he's from Germantown. And Jonathan Clark from Bartram was drafted by the Bears this year. What the mistake that I made, that Dwayne White was one of the older players who played with the Jets, and he was from South Philly. Victor Bellamy was with the Jets, and he went to Central. And um, uh, Kaida Crispina was playing in Canada, and he's from Lincoln High School. These are the people that represented this game, and this is what makes this game so great that you have an opportunity not only to play in the game, but to take the next step forward, to go to college,
to do a great job in college because you are a student athlete and then the opportunity of playing pro ball. Now at this time, I would like to call up the uh, Celebrity Chairman Award, and that's Carlos Bradley. Carlos played at Germantown High School with the San Diego Chargers, and he went to Wake Forest University, where he was an All-American. Carlos, please. Thank you. I'd just like to take a few minutes, uh, not too long, so we can get on to bigger and better things. But first of all, I'd like to uh, say thank you once again for being the honorary chairman this year. It's quite an honor. Uh, playing in the game years ago, I can remember the camaraderie that still exists now. Uh, seeing you know you guys handing out a few wolf tickets earlier brought back a few memories uh, of when I was in the game. Still had those juices flowing. But what I'd like to do just for a minute, if uh, if all the players could just give the parents and friends a hand, can we do that, players? Can we do that? I think this is a time when family and friends have been the, the greatest of importance. Uh, without without mom cooking those dinners and dad supporting your your friends, your girlfriends, you know, you guys really need to think if you would be where you are today. So parents, you need to be proud of your effort to get these young men and these young women, the cheerleaders, to this point. <laughs> young men to this point in their careers. Now to the players. Uh, as I was saying, I can remember playing in this game with some of the names that Mr. Caesar mentioned. James Parker was before me, but I played with him in college. Uh, David Martin, Mike Wisher, Mike White. These, these are some of the guys I'm still friends with now. So you need to relish this opportunity. You gentlemen are part of history. Okay, this will always be remembered, and you need to look at it as that. I look at this as one of the highlights of my career, making this all-star game. It enabled me to then go further, college, fortunately, you know, to play a few years in the pros, but right now, you need to relish right where you are. Be proud of yourself. You know, it's a number of people that we would like to sit where you're sitting right now. But you all were chosen. So Saturday night you need to go out and represent yourselves, your families, your friends, your school, and take pride in this opportunity. Everyone wasn't given the opportunity. You know, you need to really think hard about that. And for some of you, it'll be your last game. For some of you, it's just the beginning. But either way, be proud of where you are right now. Take advantage of it, relish the moment, and work hard at it. All right? Once again, I'd like to say thank you for having me here and being honorary chairman. And I'll see you Saturday night. Have a great day. You know, any of the players that come back, and you will definitely be back someday in order to take part in the All-Star activities because once you're involved with the All-Stars, now you are in a select group of people. Remember, out of all the players in the city of Philadelphia, you have been chosen above everyone else, so therefore, you have to represent that. And you represent that because at one time, we couldn't get into a game. We couldn't have our players play in an all-star game because the suburban areas would not take anyone from the city of Philadelphia. That's how that game got, or this game got started. So therefore, 
because we have the most successful game in the United States today, you have to be proud of that. And that's something that you have to talk about with, your, with all your friends, with family, that you're doing something special, not only for yourself, but for the city of Philadelphia. You know, I always say, we have the best kids in the whole United States because we talk about the good student athletes, not the kids that get in trouble, the good student athletes. And that's what makes this game so great because you are special. Now at this time, I would like to bring up uh, someone who is going to accept an award which is called the First and Goal Award, and that's to an outstanding coach, whether it's college, professional, or high school. And we had some great ones here. We had Woody Hayes from Ohio State. We had Aaron Parsegian. We had Joe Paterno. We had many, many great. We even had Gail Sayers, who was probably one of the greatest running backs that ever was, that would come here and accept an award so they can speak to our players. And this year, we're giving the award to the coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, which is Ray Rhodes. Now, Ray could not be here, so while we still love him, we still love him, but we have, we have a representative from the Eagles who's a great player for the Philadelphia Eagles and who played at Clemson University and was a great player at Clemson University, was with the um, Patriots for a while, and then he was picked up by the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's uh, Derek Witherspoon. Derek? On behalf of Coach Rose and the Philadelphia Eagles, I'd like to congratulate all you athletes who have uh, achieve the uh, all-star status and may you continue to conduct yourself as all-stars on and off the field and also on Saturday night may the team with the hardest licks and the most scores win. another award that was given by Widener University and it's called the House Selby Award and this was one of the first players in the game and um, and the school decided to give an award because of an accident that the boy had uh, when he went to college and at this time uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the coach of Widener University Bill Cooper. Uh, Widen University, we're uh, happy to present this award in, uh, in honor of Hal, his teammates had, uh, had got together and Hal had gone to Widen University after playing this game and unfortunately had an accident and no longer with us, but uh, so we're very, very happy on the part of Widen to present this. Uh, from Archbishop Ryan for the non-public team, uh, the award winner is Ed Pissari. given uh, by Widener for for uh, teammates who are going to go out there give everything they got not necessarily the best players go out there team spirit unity and just uh, going out there and working a whole, uh, and doing a great example for each other and for the Publix uh, from Northeast High School is Floyd Allen Thank you. 
Bradley for being the celebrity game chairman and Carlos would you please come up and accept this happened in this game that's very, very wonderful, but probably the best thing about this whole game is the scholarship money that we've given out. We've given out over $158,000 in scholarship money over 21 years. Over 322 people, players and cheerleaders, have received scholarships from this game. There's not another game in the United States that has given away more money or had more people receive scholarship money from an event like this. And at this time, one of the founders of the game, and uh, he was been around for all 22 years, even though he's 81. Doesn't he look good? For 81? It's unbelievable. Uh, but he will give out the scholarship awards. Ralph Rickett. Thank you, Bobby. The, um, before I go into the uh, uh, next awards, I'd like to introduce a, um, a couple of mothers who are here. Um, the reason why I want to do that is because uh, tonight, being Ascension Thursday, and a tradition at West Catholic High School is that they always have their prom on Ascension Thursday. And so none of the uh, players from West Catholic are, are here. But there were a couple of mothers, Mrs. Eisenhower, Mrs. Forsillo, uh, who said that they wanted to, to come to the banquet and uh, after they saw their, their boys off to the prom, and uh, would the two of you please stand up and let's give them a round of applause. Be sure you see us at the end of the banquet to be sure you get everything that the West Catholic guys had had, uh, had coming to them. And while I'm uh, introducing uh, the West Catholic mothers, how about the rest of the mothers here? Would all of you please stand up? All the all-star mothers. And fellas, let's give them a big hand. There's, um, even though the mothers are real proud, I know if there were anything like my mother, she went to one game, I got hurt, and she never went back to another game again. But my father never missed a game. And so I know they are uh, probably prouder than, than, uh, than, than the players, maybe. And if the, all the fathers, the all-star fathers, would you please stand up and fathers, let's give them a round of applause. thing, um, during the 22 years I've probably done every job that there was uh, involved with the game uh, except the banquet chairman. And uh, two weeks ago I found out I was going to be the banquet chairman, thanks to Cliff over here, he's laughing. And um, I just want to thank everyone, all the, all the members of the committee who, uh, who really helped. And uh, this, is, this is really the truth. I had during the last two weeks, no matter what I asked, any member of the committee, they never turned me down. And that just goes to show the, the type of guys that we have and, and women that we have uh, on the board. Uh, and as Cliff mentioned earlier, uh, none of them get paid, and they just work to make this game and you, uh, a big success for, for you. And uh, a person who used to be on the committee, and she's not anymore, who also helped an awful lot, I want to thank my lovely wife, Dolores, uh, also for helping me out.
at the um, the first two awards are pretty special awards. Um, I know they're special to all the parents and all the college coaches here sitting next to Kenny Jackson there and he was he was all excited there about the uh, the cheerleaders who had the great the great grades as the scholar athletes awards and uh, this year is no exception and maybe uh, maybe we outdone ourselves this year uh, the two fellas that I'm going to introduce as our scholar athletes uh, first of all on the public side uh, on Monday night uh, one of our board members, uh, uh, Mr. Milt Halstead, who was here earlier and he disappeared, uh, now got an award as the outstanding official in, uh, in the, uh, the whole East Coast. And also at that banquet uh, was, the, it was the National uh, Football Foundation Hall of Fame. They honored one scholar athlete from Philadelphia uh, with an outstanding average uh, outstanding great great point average, outstanding class rank, and that's Curtis Collins from Washington High School. Stay here for a minute. The, um, the next scholar athlete is um, really unbelievable. Um, he had 1,300 in his SATs. His grade point average is 4.0. He's number two in his graduating class. I'd like to know who's number one. And he's going to Harvard. And that's Donald Vile. His father Judge Hester. these two young men to, uh, to, to, uh, to stay here uh, because now we're going to start our scholarship awards. Uh, as uh, Bobby mentioned earlier, we have given out a lot of money and, and that's the, our whole uh, purpose of the game. The purpose of the game is to assist the young people of Philadelphia uh, in furthering their education. And that's what we're most, most, most proud of. Not to say that that's the be all and end all. Uh, a lot of guys will not go on to college, and that's all right too. But we just want you to be the best you can possibly be. We want you to be solid citizens, and we firmly believe that the, the young people of Philadelphia are the greatest, and not the stuff that all the people read about in the newspapers where they get the bad. Uh, the, the bad uh, uh, people, the, the, the ink, you guys deserve it because we're really, really proud of you. <clears throat> the first scholarship is uh, given uh, courtesy of uh, Core State's uh, bank. Uh, and again, it was uh, Milt Holstead who was, uh, who was uh, responsible for that. And we're going to give it to Donald Vile up here. While I'm up here. <laughs> All these awards are for $500. $500, and, um, and, and we're going to ask both uh, uh, Donald and Curtis to say a couple of words to represent the rest of the award winners. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who's contributing to this game tonight. I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to this game, to the awards, and I'd like to wish all the players good luck in this game coming up.
next um, <laughs> so cool, huh? the next uh, awards are given out uh, in memory of an outstanding individual. Um, I mentioned about how uh, about how Selby. Um, this gentleman, his son played in the game. He was a friend of mine. I coached against him. We talked football all the time. Uh, and he truly not only loved football, because he really did, but he was a very, very special person who loved young people. Loved you guys that love football. Because he was a real tough guy and a great man. His name was Tank Wilson. When you see the, uh, the game program, there's a, there's a picture of him in there. Take time to read it because he was a dedicated individual. We're fortunate to have his son here, Walter Wilson, the Mercy Douglas Corporation at, at table number eight, uh, have been contributors of this game uh, in, in Tank's memory for a long time. I, I really forget when we started it, uh, when, when they started it. And uh, in the last maybe five or six years, we, we decided that as long as there was money in the kitty, that we would match whatever amount they would give us. And so the first award, I'm going to ask Walter to come up and, and assist me in these uh, presentations, will go to Curtis. And again, it's for the amount of $500. Yeah. Public League. First person I'd like to thank is my mother, oh, thank Valerie Callums. <laughs> she was the main person that was always concerned about my books and also try to keep me out of the streets. Also, I'd like to thank my coach, Ron Cohen, for handing me a number of uh, contests, academic and also sports. Also, the players from Washington for repeating as Public League champs and also the all-star team. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Particularly close to um, a couple of schools, West Philadelphia High School and to Central High School. Central is where his his son who played uh, and uh, and was in the game. Um, and the next award goes to Acknotton Brown from Central High School. keeps getting better and better and better every time I see him, and that's Sean Foxworth from Mass Bond. in memory of Tang goes to Kareem Perrin from Bartram.
Chris from Washington. I'm going to ask Mr. Wilson now to say a couple of words. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to make this real brief, but I think it's uh, something that important that has to be said. Um, I was very, very close to my father. And one of the things he taught me was about heroes. For the last couple of weeks, you've been hearing a lot of things about some people, some professional athletes, sort of not doing what everybody thinks they ought to do. Okay? And people say, well, these athletes should watch what they do, and there's kids watching them, watching them. and that's all in well, and, and that's true. But from this game, from this night, you go on, you go out into life. Watch how you pick your heroes. Watch the people that you look up to. Everybody in this room, everyone that you will ever meet is only a human being. Okay, let's understand that. You want to be safe in picking your heroes? When you walk out of here, hug your mother and hug your father. don't have to worry because if you go from the time you got here to this time when you sit here in this room they didn't let you down they were always there even when you thought they didn't know anything <laughs> um, because when you think about it they knew enough to get you here in this room okay and that's what I want to live, leave you with just remember who your heroes really are, okay? And good luck Saturday night. Sir. The um, the next awards are also courtesy of of uh, four states, and um, the first one will go to Scott. Uh. Langian from St. Joe Pratt. Did I say that right, Scott? from St. John Newman. And the last one from Core States goes to Lou DeCray from Archbishop Ryan. Four or five years ago, we started a, um, a special chapter of the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame. It's called the City All-Star Chapter. In fact, if you look at your mugs, on the back of the mugs uh, is the City All-Star uh, Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame logo. Uh, and, and the reason for that is uh, they're the ones who pay for the mugs. And, uh, and, th and their purpose, uh, beside honoring great athletes in the city of Philadelphia, and by the way, while, while Bobby was up here mentioning all the great football players that have played in the NFL, maybe you ought to know that a guy who is making a great comeback and was honored by the Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame, uh, Tim Witherspoon, a two-time heavyweight champion of the world, also played in this game. All right, he was from South Philadelphia High School. So uh, as, uh, was, uh, as Carlos mentioned, it's a great, great tradition in back to the game. Okay, the, um, the uh, Pennsylvania Sports Hall of Fame not only gave the mugs, but they've also contributed um, money for scholarships as well. And the, uh, the first one will go to Jim Hughes from Mass Palm. Thank 
Mr. Caesar said, uh, "Why don't you read and add the, st the stats and all these guys?" And I really, I really don't have them. I have them here, but uh, with running the banquet and everything, I, I, it, it just uh, just got beyond me. But I know he's number 12 in his class, in his graduating class. Um, and the last award, if I could uh, ask my two West Catholic mothers, I'm a West Catholic grad from 1957, if I could ask them both to come up here, the winner of that award is Robert Anastasia, and if they could bring that back to him, it, it would be very nice. Okay, this is Eisenhower, this is where they come up. One more award to be given out, and uh, I'm going to have Mr. De Virgilis do that. But first, uh, Mr. McCoy Douglas, while she's getting ready, Jim, you want to do your awards or not? Along now. Okay. There's this one special scholarship that was mentioned at Parents' Night, and uh, our game director, Mr. James De Virgilis, will will, 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 will do that. Now. Yeah. And this is for the door prizes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they'll go back. Which is sold tonight. And they go back. Yeah. They were the ones that were back. sold tonight, yes. Okay. And you'll take care of this, right? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody that has helped me this year for this year's game. This is the second year I'm as game director, and if it wasn't for the board or the directors, as well as every mother and father in this room, we wouldn't have the players or cheerleaders, and I thank you for that. thank for participation in this game is the coaches as well as everybody else up here on the Adeus. Now this next trophy it's basically a little bit different than the other trophies that were given out as well as a scholarship. I had a group of people that come to me lately and they had mentioned giving out a special trophy and scholarship but not necessarily to somebody that continues on in their education, though it can, it can go to that individual. This individual could go on to the work world. He could be a mechanic. He could then also work in the sanitation department. He could also can be a truck driver. He could also be a plate fitter, a plumber. Or he could go into the armed services and serve our country. And that leads me into this person I want you to read. I want to see if anybody might know who it is. And it goes to adversity. This person, when he came out of school, ran for the legislator in Illinois. And he lost badly. He next entered business. And he failed. Now for the next 17 years of his life, he tried paying off his business. He then fell in love with a beautiful young girl. She died. He then entered politics, and he ran for Congress, and he was barely defeated. He then tried to get an appointment with the United States Land Office, but failed. He became a candidate for the United States Senate, and was barely defeated. In 1856, he became a candidate for the vice presidency and was again defeated. In 1858, he was defeated by Douglas. But in the face of all this, he abolished slavery. He de defeated and failure just constantly followed him until he made president of the United States. And I hear everybody yelling his name out there, and that's who it is. 
And that leads you to this, guys. And this is very important. And ladies. Right now you might be riding your high. And this might be the peak. And everything's going well. But at some time there's going to be adversity there. I'm going to ask you to stare it in the face and stare it down. Because sooner or later, you'll be back on top. Those that are on top right now, you might fall. Again, pick yourself back up and fight it off. One saying that I always hold around with me is that tough times don't last, but tough people do. So stick with it, guys. Good luck. God bless you. Don't let anybody get hurt. Now for my trophy, it came to a majority vote, and the individual that they chose, and that's a trophy right in front of me, which is copyrighted and nobody else could ever make. The individual will also get an exact replica, and upon one year, meeting the contingents of whether he goes to school, shows me a C average, or if he gets full-time employment, shows me a pay stub, or if he goes to boot camp, shows me that he's now full-time in the service. The individual will be from Northeast High School, Floyd Allen. players in the game and the cheerleaders and everyone associated with it and let's get everybody out to the game and let's make it a fabulous game and make sure you drive safely home. See you next year.